All right, again, I'm going to go point to Jeremiah 14, verse 14. And I want you all to think about this. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. And this is rampant. It's out of control in the world today. And, um, you know, you can blame social media for that, but uh, at the same time, all it's doing is exposing people and it's exposing false teachings. And we're able to see it now, today, better than ever. The downside of that is people are buying these false teachings and that's a real problem because that just adds to confusion and I want to show another example of this okay if it's possible yeah right there all right I'm gonna look at this video right here but um, give a little insight to this mud flood was Armageddon YouTube page let's go to the about section and I mean I could make the whole video just on this description alone mud flood was Armageddon okay so let's break this down let's go to Armageddon because I remember this as a kid you know thinking Armageddon that's biblical and it's the you know the final it's like World War three or whatever you know um, and people, just like with everything else, it seems like they make way too much out of something that is mentioned one time in the entire Bible. They, I mean, there are books. Look, I could do this right here and just show you. Books and movies and all this sort of thing. Right there, 1998. Armageddon with uh, Bruce Willis. You know, you, it's unbelievable. Movies and books and what have you and all this sort of stuff out of one mention of the word in the Bible. Sort of like uh, Lucifer mentioned just one time in the entire Bible. Movies, TV series, and so on, and so books and all that sort of stuff. Out of one mention in the entire Bible. On one hand, it does show the significance and the power of the Word of God and but also on the other hand it shows the wickedness the corruption the deceit that comes from the unbelievers as it relates to the Bible okay all right, so this mention of Armageddon, Behold, I come as a thief, blesses he that watcheth, and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame, and he gathered them together into a place called in the, Ar in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. All right, so this image, this vision is about the end of the world all right this when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to be with the lord in the air and the vials of wrath the vials of the wrath of god are poured upon the whole earth it's not world war three that's important i think to understand because that's what i understood as a, you know a child before i became a believer is you know I mean you look at this I don't know I you know I don't think I've ever saw this movie but to me the assumption is this is like a World War three you know if you were part of this you would not be saved at all but whatever Okay, so anyways, I just want to make that clear. I just want to show that, make it very simple for 
everybody in understanding this all this in the Bible it's really not that complicated but people try to make it complicated and try to confuse others because they themselves are confused and in fact that's even in the Bible 2 Timothy 3 evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived all right so let's get into uh, this particular channel in a, in one particular video uh, oh, I haven't even read this yet <laughs> I read the first line right there was Armageddon and that word was suggest it already happened the wrath of God has already come and the implication would be that we are in our glorified bodies Jesus already came in the clouds of heaven and we were already lifted up and the wrath of God was already poured on the unsaved and then the new Jerusalem came out of heaven from God and set down on the earth and now all of us are in our glorified bodies and there is no more pain no more sorrow no more tears and no more death that's the implication I think he's wrong I think people are dying I think people are in great sorrow and people are in pain that's what I think you either believe him or you believe the Bible I'm gonna go with the Bible on this one all right and so um, so the implication you know I was gonna share something I don't know what it was now the implication was that it's already passed right so let's do this here who second uh, Timothy chapter 2 verse 18 who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some now this sort of stuff right here this will work on people that don't read their Bible it will and it does people take advantage of you because you don't know your Bible that's why it's so important to read your Bible and you think about the Matthew 6 oops, when Jesus is talking about praying go in your closet and pray in this manner after this manner therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread what that means is read the Bible every day the bread is the Word of God give us this day the Word of God read the Bible every day and I don't want to be too damning about this but you know people will spend two hours watching a Netflix movie you know they'll spend two hours on Netflix watching this junk but they can't spend five minutes reading the Bible it really says a lot about where your heart is right so I feel like I'm being too damning when I talk about this I don't want to condemn anybody I just want to encourage you all to read the Bible because we are in a big time war our enemy is after us every single day all the time and we are being attacked from every possible angle and so we want to be ready is there really anything more important and I, and I contend that is there anything more interesting than the reality of what we're reading in the Bible and how it applies to our life today I don't think there's anything more interesting this is all junk this is just nonsense this is reality Alright, so let's go back to this. 
Daniel told of a time when people would be blessed if they made the 45 years of the 1335 time span. So he's correct about that. He's got that right. Let's see if I can come close to finding that verse if it's possible. Blessed is he that wait, waiteth and come to the 1305 and 30 days. Okay, so uh, we go up here, right here. There shall be 1,000. 290 days 1290 and then blessed is he that goes to 1335 and that 1335 means that the wrath of God has already passed the unsaved have already been thrown into the fire so anybody that still remains at 1335 is only going to be those of us that are saved now is I mean, that's after Armageddon. That's after the wrath of God. 1335 is after the vials of the wrath of God are poured out. Satan would be imprisoned for a thousand years and then loosed after 335 years. Okay, this is not in the Bible. This is just pooped out of his butt. Right, three hundred thirty-five. Let's just see what all is mentioned regarding three hundred thousand. No, nope, that's not it. And the asses thirty thousand. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thirty and seven. No, nope, that's not it. thousand to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days no that's not it either that was this I was pulled out of your butt right there that's completely it's like you lifted up your leg and you just that air came out that's not in the Bible After 335 years of Satan gathering an army to attack a camp of saints. All right, so let's, that camp of saints, let's go. First of all, let's do it this way. Not there. That's what I was afraid of. So let's go try to make it easier to find. Ah, oh, there it is. Why didn't it Camp of the Saints Camp of the Saints Explain that one to me. You know, I, I think I've noticed this before. Is it because I capitalized it? Or did what I do wrong here? Camp of the Saints. Let me do that again. And so I've had questions about this before. So what I do wrong? Camp of Oh, Camp of Saints. That's what I'm doing wrong. I'm not very smart. I'm an idiot. That's what's going on. Alright, okay. Well, I feel much better knowing that I'm an idiot. That I'm a big time dummy. Alright, so Uh, where's this at? And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all. So to understand this vision, you have to understand that we are lifted up in the air. We're in the air when this happens. All right? And there's all kinds of verses here. Alright, so, oops, right here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, the dead in Christ rise first, and those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right? 
Now, when the this gathering together, let's we got to go back to Revelation 20. When this happens, they're not going to attack us. There's no mention of them attacking us. The only battle, the only attacking that's going on is fire coming down from God out of heaven. So Satan, when he's loosed, he gathers all the unsaved people at our feet and fire comes down from heaven. This is the vials of the wrath of God. Comes down out of heaven from God and devours them all. There's it's not like hey, there's going to be they're going to be shooting arrows at us. They're gonna, maybe they're going to be launching missiles. No, none of that's going to be happening. It's it's like you've heard the expression there, me and you are going to get in a fight and there's going to be two hits me hitting you and you hitting the ground right that's not really a fight it's not much of a fight is it so anyways satan and okay, let's go back after 335 years of satan gathering an army to attack now this is going to be in a moment of time this is going to be very quick it's not going to take 335 years for satan to gather the unsaved at our feet come on man and again, let me just make this clear. This gentleman here is not the deceiver. He's been deceived. And he's all he's doing is echoing or parroting something that he's heard. It's not something he's gotten from the Bible. All right, so let's not give him too much credit here, just like with anybody else, right? Satan joins the beast and false prophet in the lake of fire, where they have been for over a thousand years. So that's not that's not in the Bible either. So again, uh, the where we'd have to go back, but let's how do we let's pick this apart a little bit here. So we got. Satan, we got beast, and we got false prophet right there. Okay, we go to Revelation 20, and we got, here, we could do it this way. We got the beast, we got the false prophet, and we got Satan. Okay. Now, this when the thousand years are expired this is at the end of the thousand years after the thousand years that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire destroys them all and death and hell are cast into the lake of fire that's at the end of a thousand of the thousand years period and that's from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return the time of his return is the end of the world now all right so well I forgot what do you what do you say here all right so He's saying that the say that Satan, beast, false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire, and they're there for a thousand years. The Bible says at, after the thousand years, they are thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. All right. So we don't have to worry about that because. The second death has no power over us, over us that are saved right now. We are sealed, secure, sanctified forever. The second death has no power over us. So, again, 335 years, that's not in the Bible. 
and the beast false prophet satan being in the lake of fire for a thousand years that's not in the bible i read the the bible what's you read the the bible as true truth and i try to keep it in order well keep trying buddy because um you're making the same mistake that um, so many other people are doing and that is listening to false teachers and not trusting the Bible that you hold in your hands. All right, so I was going to take a look at one of his videos. So we're going to go back here. This is a short video. Welcome everybody to Mudflood was Armageddon. Mudflood was Armageddon. Don't let them tell you anything else unless they're willing to debate you in a fair and honest way. As an end time prophet, I woke up thinking these thoughts and asking myself these questions. Are evil people planning control by force, mind control, or both? Mind control to what end? These are things I've written down to share my thoughts, my friends. Mind control to what end? The secret of National Institute of Mental Health. The child's book, The Secret of NIM, was based on the studies of John C. Calhoun's rats. I know they have used rats to train people. In their mind, it was important to John C. Calhoun to document his studies and do what he had. Truth is not what world manipulators would have us believe. Truth is not a concept contrived. Truth is not the golden rule, but the reason we live by the golden rule. In other words, we live by the golden rule to please Jesus. Well, yeah, yes, no. Now, the golden rule. Oh, I'm sure you know it. I hope you know it. Let's see if I can find one example of it. Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Lots of examples right there. That's a good one. Um, yeah, so uh, the golden rule is to love your neighbor as yourself. So when you're looking at somebody else, look at them as though they were you and love them the way that you would want to be loved. Right? That's the golden rule. Now, um, let's do it this way. Here. See if this works. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oops. And then the truth is I, this might be the point that he's making it's not subjective. All right, it's absolute. All right, so Jesus sends us the spirit of truth. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So, I want you to be born of God. I want you to have the spirit of God in you and have the spirit of truth guiding you. And if that's what's happening in your life then you know be patient first of all, all right, in your patience possess ye your souls a very powerful verse right there and then be confident that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
course, the day of Jesus Christ is when he comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the moment in a twinkling of an eye. Okay. Christ. Because we will be judged by our actions of pleasing him. No, that's not true at all. We're going to be judged by whether we're saved or not saved. That's the judgment of God, and it's all over the Bible. Uh, and the simplest way, in my opinion, maybe you have a better way. I would love to hear it. The simplest way of explaining this is the wheat and the tares, in my opinion. So the wheat and the tares, they grow together. The wheat is the saved. The tares is the unsaved. So when harvest time is when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels of God gather together the wheat. That is, we are lifted up to be with the Lord. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. That's the harvest of God. And then the unsaved are gathered together at our feet and they are burned. They're thrown in the fire. That's exactly what this parable of the wheat and tares is talking about. Exactly. There is no other judgment. The judgment is, are you saved or not saved? The judgment is not God sitting there with a calculator counting up all your sins. You should know this. I, I really feel like people should know this. The wages of sin is death. So you commit one sin. The price is death. And of course we go back to Genesis, back to the Garden of Eden. And that's, um, you know, when uh, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because they did that now, they are born in, or they were born into sin. Meaning that we're all going to die. We're all going to die that first death. But blessed and holy is he. That has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. The first resurrection is the Lord Jesus Christ. When he ascended to heaven and promised to come back to get us. All right, that's the first resurrection, and and if we have we have part in that when we are born of God, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? When we are saved, the second death no longer has any power over us at all. All right. Period. Dot. Exclamation point. I asked this question of myself and you. Why did Jesus heal the sick? I could have asked why. Well, did think about this. He heals the sick. Think of how much more he's going to heal us when he comes in the clouds of heaven. We're going to be changed from incorruptible. I'm sorry. We're going to be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. We are going to be fully healed. Did he feed the multitude? And he's, and you got the physical feeding, and then Jesus feeds us with his word, with his blood, with his life. He who sent the shepherd put spots on the leopard. He that sent the sh shepherd put spots on the leopard. Sure what that is. I don't know what that well, I don't know what that is. On the leopard or Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leper his spots? Then may ye also do good. They're accustomed 
to do evil. Uh, is that what he's referring to? I, I don't know. We can't go to a pawn shop to redeem time? Alright, so... Uh... How do I say something here? Or do I even need to say anything? The end time prophet woke up thinking these things and more, such as, do I like olives? <clears throat> you know, I want to say something. But I don't feel like it'd be very nice. So. Because I know Jesus Christ must have experienced the same taste? Uh, no, not saying nothing. Study John Calhoun and the Rat. Yeah, okay, no. Study John Calhoun and the Rat. Well, I'll tell you what. You could do that or. You could study the Bible. Your choice. Man, you could learn all about rats. You could also learn all about the Bible. Your choice. Experiments, the National Institute of Mental Health, the secretive. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you another thing. Let me give you a couple opinions here. First of all, um, you're going to get. Um, more value out of studying the Bible. You're going to get more wisdom, knowledge, and more peace. And really, that's all. It's all about peace, isn't it? I mean, how can you have? How can anything matter if you don't have any peace? If your life is in torment, then the Word of God, God loves us. And the Word of God is there to give us His love, and to give us His peace. And the simple knowing and understanding of Scripture gives us great peace. Now, um, so, and I'll tell you another thing. The, the Bible is much more interesting, much more interesting than all these science fiction movies and all these um, CIA studies on rats and mental institutions and all that sort of stuff. I don't know why people are so fascinated with that all the wickedness going on. And I just have the opinion that the Bible is so much more interesting. And I at the same time it's almost befuddling how so many people can get the Bible wrong. And people are in great error when they just sit back and think they know the Bible. Or they think that, oh, the church knows the Bible, or, or the group of people knows the Bible, or people already read the Bible up and down, there's nothing to see there. Ah, that's a big time mistake. Because there is so much deception out there. And I think a lot of it is attributed to the fact that people don't read their Bible. You know, you, you go to uh, college seminaries, college or school or whatever, Think about it. Are they going there to learn the Bible, or are they going to there to learn ancient manuscripts and doctrines and different churches and ideologies? How about this? Just take your Bible, read it, and believe it's from God. That's more useful than all the seminary schools in the entire world. You're not gaining anything. You don't have any special knowledge going to a seminary school at all. I don't care how much money you make and I don't care how much pride you have in going to seminary school. You don't have more knowledge, more wisdom, and more understanding than those of us that only have a Bible and just believe the Bible that we hold in our hands is from God. 
all right you're not an expert you don't know more than I do or anybody else that reads and believes the Bible that they hold in their hands everything we need to know is right there in the Bible and then of course I got some opinions on mental uh, institutions of NIM and realize we've all been programmed but if we are sheep we will hear his voice it's a flatter nation golden ages past mud flood was Armageddon you know I'm never going to tell you anything else why would I well, you're full of pride and that would devastate your pride to find out that you're wrong in the same way that you're promoting flat earth and preaching to those that believe in a heliocentric model they won't change their mind either because of pride they don't want to admit that they're wrong pride is very damaging it really is I, I've been called to have your best interest at heart Amen. All right. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right? So the the heart is deceitful, but the word of God is pure. We cannot trust our heart, but we can trust the word of God. All right, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. So again, trust the Bible, trust the word of God and question everything I mean the, what are you what are you doing here you're going outside of the Bible oh no what's the I can't remember nothing can't remember Scott prove all things hold fast that which is good right prove all things prove all things prove all things all right think about it 